阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。阿弥陀佛。Good day, everyone. Uh, today we'll continue with the、uh, clause sixty. Uh, slander and other abuse to spread malicious rumors and ruin innocent reputations. I think we mentioned that last week about these、uh, sentences, uh, where media is commonly used、uh, as a technique. I mean. Not just for its、um, original purpose of spreading information, but it's also used to spread something that is not true, and、uh, that has a lot of uh, purposes. Um, uh, you know, trying to achieve different kind of、uh, purposes. Some you know arise from selfish purposes. You know, they're trying to spread propaganda, trying to spread、uh, what is not true in order to、uh, defame the person, even though that person, you know, the target has not. Done anything wrong?、Um, that is also a transgression, and it's very、um, you know shameless and、uh, brazen, because、um, people need really to rely on trust to survive in this society, and to deprive them of that is very、um, very unsightly, you know, very、um, very cruel. And to do that in order to achieve one's gain is、uh, it's even worse.、Mm, however, that has been happening again and again,、uh, you know, in in media's, you know, spreading all sorts of、um, misinformation. It does not require people to、uh, to prove whether they are right or not. You just need to spread enough mistakes. You just need to spread enough misinformation for them to think you might did it. That's more than enough. So that's the dangerous part about、um, slanders, you know, about verbal abuse. It's just, it's not obvious, you know. Sometimes it's not direct. If it's direct, of course we can stop it because we can see it, we can stop it. But we can't see it. Sometimes it's hidden with,、uh, with a few percentage of truth, you know, or maybe ninety percent are true, one percent is not, ten percent is not.、Uh, this might be a bit stretch, but.、Um, But, like, it just reminds me of you know Buddha mentioned about the clauses. You know, he mentioned like if anyone quotes, you know, the not just quotes, like、um, trying to you know paraphrase and what Buddha have said, but they intentionally you know shifted a word, you know, meanings of a word,、uh, a word to, in order to you know slowly deviate the meaning from what was originally intended. It's considered a、um, misconduct in speech. It's considered slander against the Dharma, because that's not what Buddha actually meant. But this was taken out of context. Even though it's exactly the same word, you know, you put it in a different context, people might misunderstood.、Uh, and the one who actually get hurt, and、uh, this is where karma comes in. Why is there karma in slandering Dharma? Because people who actually got Abuse got、um, disadvantage, got rip,、uh, rob of the opportunity to have a better outlook in life because of you know better guidance in life because of this misinformation or misinterpretation of the Buddha's teaching. So that's very serious and my in my you know cause one you know to deprive of that wisdom and the result the karma is. More sufferings to the person who did that. So there is a story of you know a、uh, very、um, like ancient China. There's a great monk who was giving speech. I forgot the name. His historical is real, and he's giving a speech、uh, in one of the temple near the mountain. Suddenly there is a white wolf. There is a wolf,、uh, fox. Sorry, there is a fox coat in white coat. I think. But walking in, you know, kneeling down and listen to the Dharma, and 
after Dama was finished and he kind of like kneel, kneel down in front of the uh, master you know, who gives a talk uh, giving a gesture of praying and uh, looks like he ask, uh, it, uh, it is asking for help so the master went down and you know communicate with this animal because he has the ability to do so and when he went into the meditation uh, when he went into the past life of the fox he realized it, this fox was a monk like him he was practitioners uh, for 500 years ago 500 lives ago not years that's, that's not enough 500 lives ago so for 500 lives that means 500 reincarnation he has been a fox so why so he went to the source you know that the immediate life before he became a fox he was giving a sermon and that sermon talks about you know someone asked him a question did Buddha are the enlightened beings like Buddha Bodhisattvas Arahants still born by still bound by the karma and this is you know translated in Chinese in the context right he meant to say um no, he, he, he did not reply properly. He just say, Oh, those enlightened beings, you know, the the Buddha, Bodhisattvas and um Arahans, they are no long uh, they are um they will never be be bound by karma. Something like that. Because of this misinterpretation, he has been uh how to say suffering the reincarnation as a fox instead of, you know, human and practice towards enlightenment and that is not intentional right that is not like trying to slander and utter abuse this is considered like a mistake rather than a crime in a sense of um, the intent however that it incurs a 500 lives of you know born into an animal body of course he's much better than pigs and you know other animals that was going to be slaughtered because he's as monk, but he lives as a animal rather than a human, with better chance and access to the teachings. So now, because he can communicate with the um, the, the fox, ask the fox, tell me what you told me, tell me what you said last time, uh, tell me what the other person asked you in in your uh, past past life, five hundred lives ago. Uh, repeat the same thing you have um, uh, talked about 500 lives ago. Then he said that, questions. And this time, right, after asking the question, does the enlightened being subject to karma, karmic jurisdiction, karmic law? Um, this venerable says, that the enlightened beings are no longer uh, confused about the karmic law. The enlightened beings are clear, uh, uh, have achieved clarity. You know? Buddha has perfect clarity. Bodhisattva has near perfect clarity. Arahan has first level of a, a, a otherworldly clarity. That means they're able to see beyond what the worldly six dreams could see. Hence, they're able to navigate the karmic water better. That means they do not commit sins, so to speak. They just do not do it. They can't. Even you kill them, even you know some very bad people trying to you know take their lives, stuff like that, they will never breach the five precepts. The ten meritorious deeds, they will never. They rather have they rather lost their life than allowing precepts to be breached. Of course Buddha cannot be killed because his um his merit is perfected. However he could be hurt, harm. Um, but like Arahan and stuff they have not perfected, you know, those sages, they have not fully perfected their merits. They will be killed if they have that kind of karma in the past. But they will not, they have no fear of death, right? They have no fear of this repercussion. They will only take it with a peaceful mind. They're no longer attached to the, as we mentioned in Venerable Chandra's teaching, right? No longer attached to the false sense of self, the was young, uh, the, the 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 form of others, you know, the idea of others, and the idea of the world, no longer attached to the uh, appearances of others, appearance of the world, appearances of time. So he he's free of these four appearances, phenomena, uh, attachments. So I, I'm going to 
to detail, but this is basically the state of. Um, this is why Dharma is important. It helps us to understand what the sages understand. Although we couldn't reach their level yet, but we can at least see what they see, um, just by thinking. They're experiencing with we're thinking, right? We're not there yet, but knowing what you going to get is very important to give you some confidence. So back to the point. So they are still subject to karma. That's the point. The issue is, um, it was explained as as if when you gain enlightenment, you no longer subject to the law of karma. That's not true. But Buddha has to appear sick as well when he appear in this world, right? For three months, you know, and he only have uh, maliang. You know, he only can eat the horse food when there's uh, starvations. He appears sick. He appears aging. He has to follow the rules of the world, and also he has devadatta. He has all these trouble. You know, trouble group of bhiksu, you know, the rebellious students causing trouble in his sangha. That's also the karma of his past life before he was enlightened. Troubles will still find him, but he no longer sway, uh, worried about it. He no longer, he knew it would happen. That's one thing. That's why he's not worried. The other thing is he no longer attached to the body. The body is just a tool for him to teach, spread the Dharma. So back to the point here is these are very well-intentioned people. They no longer. Uh, they are not like slander. They really want to follow the teachings. But yet they made mistakes, and they still have to suffer these consequences. And we understand no one gives you these consequences. It's it's our own doing. And let alone slander, let alone literal verbal abuse, you know. So gives us a scale, a perspective, how serious it is if one actually intentionally slander it. Um. So be careful. People would do these kind of things because they don't understand how serious it is, and you know, until they do, you know, you know, because they wait. Right? Everyone has a measurement in their heart, and if they think this is more important, um, you know, the um, wait. I haven't shared a link. No one's coming. Oh God, sorry. Uh, give me a sec. So yeah, they wait. They wait it, and they think you know they gain more by just slander people. But little did they know they lost a lot. They stand to lose a lot in future. Yeah, one thing is you burn bridges. You hurt people who are uh, who have done nothing wrong in that regards. Um, uh, people who under people who follows these kind of you know slanders and misinformation are usually lacking wisdom that means lacking ability to discern what is right and wrong so the audience target audience are these people you know people who knows will not spread it will not even take it seriously um only when those people who are you know easily sway easily provoke easily you know they didn't settle down and actually allowed you know they are better part of themselves to you know the wiser part of themselves to look into this rumors then they will follow, like a sheep, you know. Um, and the consequences is, you know, you actually cause a lot of people. In old days, you know, people kill because of these slanders. You know, this uh, minister is trying to kill, uh, trying to overtake your power because he's doing so well in his job. Kung Gao Gai Zhu, you know. Uh, yeah, suddenly. Everyone loves him more than he. Uh, everyone respect and reveres him more than he reveres the king. So, you know, he might be one day. You know, when you weaken, long live the king. You're no longer the king. So this might happen, and he and this has been too much in the history, right? The king, the people who actually treat. I mean, to like some honest people, you know, capable people who really want to do. Good job to serve the people, country, but um, and without any uh, mind, like without any intention on the throne, you know, vying for the throne. But because you know, human, as you can see, is a very complicated society, complicated people, complicated animal in a sense. It's got to have someone trying to do that, you know, whispers in the ears, and then this becomes. 
intrigues and then this court intrigue goes into this um, you know lots of uh, unfounded rumors like I say you don't need to have proof you just need to have enough po- probable cause so to speak uh, to cause that doubt in them it's so hard to get trust it takes years to build it takes one word to break distrust and a lot of them are unfounded uh, truth is the first casualty to be honest so those are those are the dangers of this world you know, dangers of the world we're living in this is not it's not fun it's Saha world you know we're stuck we're stuck with this physical body we can't read people's mind as in we can't communicate properly other than words and words are prone to misunderstood to be misunderstood too many times people don't mean what they say, right? And then then they hear it wrong and then they haven't able to like pull back. If you remember what Venerable Shana talked about, the first thought, you know, like a mirror reflecting the thing as is. It will show its real self, the real meaning. But instead they go into the second thought. They move too fast to the second thought. Oh, that, that's what he mean. He immediately jumped to the conclusion, so to speak. Jumped to that scenario. Whereas there is a huge high chances that that person might not actually mean this at all. All right. All you need to do is just either sink it in if you lost the chance to ask him the question or when and put it aside, just like the mirror. You don't reflect what's not in front of you. And when you meet him again, Usually, it would the attitude and everything will tell you it's actually not what it means. So these are these are how to say the truth is that simple, right? It's just like that. But we twist it, we twist it, we yarn it, we we spin the yarn and spin the yarn until it becomes something entirely different, all right? Um, and then relationship broken up and things lost just because of one uh, careless word. So people who say things, people who hear things. We need to be really, really careful. All right, it's rather you be a, a person who don't talk much than a person who uh, have a slip of tongue and you know cause a lot of misunderstanding um, in between parents and children, between husband and wife, between teachers and students, between friends, colleagues, subordinates and boss. You know, and uh, and 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 everyone's hurt on that you know marriage is hurt family is hurt uh, you know sometimes you don't even need to say much you could just assume something like imply something like when you say when you state something that seems like a fact but you put it in the wrong timing and people might hear it the other way like oh why is this person walking why is John come uh, walking with another woman on a street holy moly that's it and he's gonna hear a lot from his wife and stuff like that and this crap goes on and on and even they realize it's not the truth and they will start saying why didn't you trust me oh no you didn't trust me uh what did you what did you even you know assume i would do that and it's like all oh, men's like that and then yeah there we go i'm writing a script now see so easy <clears throat> right the essence of drama is conflict right no conflict no drama no drama pure land drama six rim so if you like to watch drama, duty as charge, you're stuck in six rooms. If you think this is all just a drama, don't take it too seriously and you're unmoved by it, you go to pure end. You see things as is. You're able to do the right decision because you don't twist and yarn. You go straight to the point. Mm. So those are those are like those slanders, those malicious rumors and stuff like that. It will ruin people. Right, and 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 it will ruin everything. It, it will ruin more than bombs, more than you know, swords, more than bullets, because those things, you know, those things are direct. They kill this and that, that this. But this one, they are the one who might in spark the war, right? A person who yield the gun can only shoot three hundred thirty rounds per second, uh, the per mag. A person who used a very sharp but ill-used tongue 
can cause thousands and thousands of people to raise up arms and kill each other. Pen is sharper than sword. Pen is sharper than sword. And Chinese has an even more um, visual description of that. A body of seven foot. I mean, who has seven feet? They're very tall ancient people, right? Tang Tang Qi Tzu Xu. A body, a human with, a, uh, you know, a person, a man with a seven feet body. Uh, do not listen to a three inch tongue because at the tip of the tongue there is a spring and that spring can kill people without bleeding anyone out <laughs> it's a very literal translation tang tang qi si chu mo ting san chun she she shang you long quan sha ren bu jian xue it's powerful right that's what that's why tongue is this ability to speak is powerful. All right, you can unite people, you can destroy people, you can enlighten Buddha. Right, his tongue can cover the whole face. It might seem amusing, but back in that uh, tradition in India, people who people who don't lie for you know many lifetime, they have a very how to say uh, big and well-rounded tongue. They can even cover the whole face, and Buddha has that ability. He never lies for many, many lifetime. Um, that's why he perfected his Buddhahood, um, and he uses ability to speech, speak, to enlighten even more people, to bring actual happiness to many people's life. So that's that's why you know it's a double-edged sword. It depends on how you use it. And also, we can go into the psychology of this kind of action. Why would people slander? All right, let's not talk about big country, uh, big politics and stuff. Classroom, All right? Girls, boys, you know, talk about this student, that student. Talk about that person. Oh no, I seen, uh, I seen he's going into the you know uh, suspicious places, doing some suspicious stuff, and not unfounded, right? And then they have prejudice. You know, this person looks better than me. I'm going to make him like a, look like a, you know, flowery person or, um, you know, a person who is, who has no uh, clean conduct, you know, who is subject to be uh, humiliated. I'm, I'm going to try to humiliate him so that I can look better. Prejudice, right? Um, back then we say, oh, women do it a lot of that. Now, even nowadays, guys and women, <laughs> There's no difference anymore, but the bad the, the the problem is not gender. The problem is the mindset, jealousy, envy, and um, and that will give rise to the action of slanders. Example, Master Jingko, how many people slander him? Too many, right? It's be it's better now. Moving towards 21st century is so bad. Back in 80s and 90s, so bad. People just, it's just too much. Sometimes people might not, you know, understand. They get overwhelmed by this, you know, wars of lies and deceits. And they really thought he's that kind of person. But Venerable is not. So my time will tell, right? Why? Because they are jealous. They are envious of envy of, you know, his ability to talk about Dharma in a very clear, succinct way that touches many people's heart. He has a talent. He is capable in this field and he was placed in the right place. Unfortunately, a lot of people felt threatened rather than wanting to learn, wanting to improve because everyone has their own strength and weaknesses. Should help each other to complete each other, right? Not stepping on each other. That should be what's happening. But unfortunately, this is, this is what happened. And it hurts and it caused the people who were supposed to gain, you know, from this teaching the the opportunity. It cost them the opportunity. You know, they, they, they misunderstood and you know they have this preconception already planted in them because of the information they got mostly are false. They feed themselves with that kind of data. Naturally they the way they see things is be, that you, you are what you eat in a sense, right? 
you are what you hear. You 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 see what you hear. Right? You're visualizing things even though it's not based on what actually happens. So they're no longer a mirror. They they become someone else's telescope or something. They do, they're no longer reflecting whatever it is. They just follow whatever's uh, made up and then they exaggerate it or they place it in their head. So this is very sad. Um, and it costs them the opportunity to gain enlightenment, you know, bring up the confidence in chanting Amitofo. So this, if you're using Buddhist context, it becomes breaking up the Sangha, breaking up the Sangha that is harmonious, all right? And the karmic penalty is the heaviest among all. You know, it's the same level of penalty for killing your parents, mom and dad, killing, um, killing, attempt to hurt the Buddha. Buddha cannot be killed. You hurt, you might be able to hurt like Devadatta did, attempt to hurt the Buddha or the enlightened beings. Uh, and then killing the other hunt, right? This is the enlightened sages. They're not perfected, but they're enlightened. Um, so those four are very serious and very obvious. The last one is breaking up the sangha, and the hell is the 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 consequences is a is a manifestation of avicii hell. Like I said, no one pushes you there; you put yourself there. If one commits this crime, they themselves created this level of hell, and this is because of oh, it's too deep. Uh, it's it's because of these. Um, Consciousness, alaya consciousness, right? And we are like the painter, right? In Sutra, I mentioned like our heart is like a painting, right? Slander is painting it ugly. Like what Buddha did is painting it clean, clean and pure, return it back to the blank canvas, right? And uh, people who do good deeds, say good stuff, they paint the beautiful, serene pictures. So our we are all painters and what we paint on in our life, you know, towards others, towards ourselves, towards our work and stuff like that depends on uh, what's in it, you know, where do we come from? If we come from the place of jealousy, of um, selfishness, that means you only think about yourself and you're trying to, you know, harm other people in order to gain something, then it becomes... No, becomes ugly because you're painting it ugly. Eventually, that painting is more and more structured, more complete. It engulfs you. So the only person who actually got harm is yourself if you commit the transgression. A uh, person who do the other hand, the other way, you know, to do good deeds, to trying to, um, you know, be true to themselves. Um, do not live without regret. Do not live without, um, without, um, without going against the conscience. You know, sleep tight, sleep very well, eat very well. They are not fearful of anything. When time comes, they accept their fate. Eventually, they will go to a bad, better place. So that's how it works. And the best way to deal with this kind of slanders and stuff like that is to avoid it all at all. Treat it as if it does not exist. Um, when time comes, right, people who uh, have wisdom, they immediately know. Who, people who does not understand, misunderstood. With time, if you persist and you do not fall through your conducts, you know, you held yourself, you carry through, you know, you made it through this time, these trouble, turbulent times, then people will see you're not actually like that. I jump to the conclusion. And it's amendable as long as you're not becoming them. You're not becoming that very person that's trying to slander you. So if you did it to me, I'm going to do the same. So that's going to worsen the whole thing. Um, that's right. <clears throat> very important like you need to like not allow the words to, to affect us by you know we need to like be very careful with the information we receive you know um, like in Master talk about like in Buddhism there's you know, wisdom and if we don't use wisdom that means if we don't understand enough 
the Dharma, you know, how it works, karma and stuff like that. If we don't allow ourselves to, you know, settle down our emotions and see things as is, we easily get swayed and no matter how diligent we seemed, we do not yield the result we want. Um, sometimes, you know, people say they follow the school of you know, Zen and then this one follows the school of Pure Land and they don't understand the actual Dharma, right? And then they just get stuck in that mindset of this is not what the Buddha says. Maybe the students, among the students or teachers, they might not um, say it clearly. So people who follow the school and they don't understand that all schools came from Buddha and, you know, arise from him. And he only say that because he break it up in his, he didn't break it up in the school, right? He just say whatever suits the person who ask. Ask and ye shall receive. And he just merely give what the person needs. And that people who follow him compile it into a book. That's it. So yeah. I would say um and then, you know, if they don't have that level of you know, understanding, they become stuck in that, you know, teachings and school. So it, it's supposed to help them to attain enlightenment, hence a clarity on all matters. It becomes, you know, I'm going to, it becomes stuck in that path. I'm higher than you, you are lower than me. And then they start slandering other school. Hey, Zen is like too much. And then Zen was like, yeah, you pure land, you are like, kindergartens so did that kind of the kind of thing is like silly you know they are one thing and they are different because they appears different because different people different preference different preference hence different path was made it was not directly carved out by buddha like oh, you have to do this that buddha never said that he just he's just there and then you ask him he's like a mirror reflect back to you and then you can take that much then you go out and teach other people with that much and people who have only know from you that much if they're smart they were able to discern everything from what little you give them they were able to get more learn more but if some most people they don't get it they just follow whatever you say like a like a you know like a holy commandment which is good but because obviously if you able to come out from your teachers and you know qualify and stuff the thing you say would not deviate from teaching, but it will be smaller in scope and supposed to be a platform to jump and then go higher, not stuck in words, play with words, semantics. That's what happens eventually when like Zen gets further and further downwards, you know, and, and pure Zen as well, stuff like that. Not practiced, not properly put in real life, it becomes semantics, it becomes fancy words, it becomes a fashionable stuff, it becomes a fashion just to show off rather than actually talk about how do we gain, how do we get through these troubles, you know, how to get through these mind um, obstacles, practical, practical cultivation. So yeah, don't be like that. Don't be a don't be a fool. You know, always bring yourself um, up to date. Listen to Dharma and don't paint anything on the Dharma teaching. Just be there, listen to it. You don't understand, put it aside. Continue with your life, enjoy your time with family, yourself. Get back to it, listen again. The more you listen, the more impression you left on your alaya consciousness in your, in your mind. Better you are. One, uh, the stronger impression it is when time comes right kind of condition we can say condition like what what you see what you hear what you think what you uh, touch what you smell etc your day to day stuff will bring out that clarity and then you're able to understand oh that's what it's all about and your life is better and bigger what master means by you know learning buddhism is the highest enjoyment in life all right so the story is the the conclusion is all sorts of um 
slander will stop with you know, the silence of the wise. Slanders will stop at the door at the, at, uh, with the silence of the wise. People who see things clearly, they do not say anything. Do not treat it as a, they do, do not make it a thing. It's just a rambling of a word. It's just like kids, you know, when they goo goo gaga. No, unless you want to play with them, of course, you can goo goo gaga with them, but you know it's not going anywhere. Right? And I seen a, a, a short video about a mom saying that um, the one thing about you know spending with your toddlers. You love them very much, yes. But the thing is, because they start to grasp, understand things around them, and they came to you and trying to, you know, solidify that information. But the thing is, everything they say, you already heard, you already know, like 20, 30, 40 years, 50 years ago. So sit there, you're sitting there with that cute little face, and then they keep saying that same thing again and again that you already know, right? Uh, in this case, you know, someone like that, you know, they spread these slanders and stuff like that. But no matter how many fancy tricks they have, you know, no matter how close it is to the truth, how truthful it, it, it might be, um, the best thing is not to take it at the face value, not to take it seriously. And if you can't recognize whether it's right or wrong, set it aside. It will come up on its own, Right. And uh, if it's not something it does not concern directly to you, don't allow it to poison your mindset, right? If it affects you, investigate. Look at where it come from. And always keep in mind, you know, don't um, use, you know, prejudice and stuff like that. It's hard. We, have all, we all have bias, but don't allow yourself um, to, you know, jump the gun. Let it come to you. You just follow whatever is there. All right? And then lay it there in front of you. And allow it to ferment by itself. Hopefully as you go down the investigation, something will come up. Something's wrong. Something's missing. It will. Um, it takes time, but it will. It will come up. So the best thing is to keep quiet. Don't say anything. Observe. Don't say too much. That's why you have two eyes but one mouth. I really like how they how they um, figure it out. Like that, you need two eyes to see. You, know? you need to see clearly. But you only have one mouth. You don't need to talk too much. You only need to talk. Only talk what you need to say, and then just enough. You know, not too much. Uh, yeah, that's it. The last sentence. Then we'll call it a day. Is 163. Okay, episode 163, 162, and 163. That's the Chinese one. Ruin others' reputation and claim doing so is righteous. To commit blasphemy and claim doing so is just. So we need to understand what is. Others' reputation and claim doing so is righteous. So, what is righteous? Right, this this word has garnered so many negative meaning rather than what it originally means, righteousness. What is right, what is honest, what is sincere. Becomes a term people use this honest, sincere, uh, good as a mask for their actual evil deeds. So they appear as so that's why it's not like direct. It's like Leofan mentioned, it's not just, you know, what appears it's more than what meets the eye, you know. More, more than what you see. Don't allow it. Um, don't, don't take it at the face value. Uh, allow it to show it by itself. So this case, it talks about um, using these labels, you know, using this appearance as a good person to cover up one's um, negative evil deeds. Um, Ruin others' reputation, claim doing so is just. Yeah. Mm. They say, hey, freedom of speech, something like that. Um, freedom of press, so I can say what I want. Of course, we have a defamed charge, but those kind of legal things will never be effective in social settings. At most, it will 
stop the behavior, but it won't stop the, you know, the intention. They won't make him ashamed to do it. That's an entire different matter, right? Those constitutions and stuff like that is just a framework. It's a very crude thing. It's not. It's not touching the hearts of the people. It's just floating in the brain and all this machination, politi- subject to machination, subject to subject to manipulation, right? So if you have free speech, fine. That means if you have more mouthpiece because it's free, right? And you can do whatever you want. I can buy more people to speak what I want them to hear because I have money. So I will buy 300, 2,000 people or, you know, 30% of this country's media so that they can continue to reiterate what I want to say compared to, say, the other, you know, 1%, 2% people, normal people. Um, unfortunately, there's no other way around it, right? Uh, we're not saying, I mean, we're not going there. Uh, it's going too far. Let's, let's go back to the point. Ruining others' reputation claim do so is righteous. Um, usually it's to cover up and if we are not like doing the right thing ourselves, of course we will be ashamed to say, you know, I don't think this is correct, to correct others. Um, the, this act is perverse to that mindset. Why would the person do that, you know? Uh, they're trying to claim the upper hand in the public forum. They're trying to claim. Um, they're trying to claim uh, good people labor from the for, from the public eyes in order to advance their own gains, career, like especially politics. Um, actual person who are actually righteous, right? I'm not talking about self righteous. That's a that's a that's a different thing. That's why this word becomes negative, all right. People who are actually righteous, they always correct themselves. They're always trying to stand up right in terms of their conduct before they don't usually point fingers at others. They, they usually reflect themselves, you know. And if others are doing something wrong, they usually make it more subtle when they want to correct it. If they do it directly, usually it's the person they can take it and they actually wants to learn and change. Otherwise, they will treat. They will usually be very polite and stay, keep a distance. Um, person who are actually righteous, they always have, you know, their heart is in the right place. You know, they don't allow that wandering thoughts and, you know, especially selfishness and all that to take over. So all they think is in the public good, and they will not do harm. People who are righteous are always loyal and treat people kindly give more than more rather, rather than trying to gain and take when they say something they do it right and when they say something they say whatever it is it is what it is of course there are different levels of cultivation people are wiser who are righteous and wise they understand the this complication their heart is the right place but they have a better intelligence and smarts so that they know when it's not the right time to say things they don't but they were always trying to make things go towards the better directions all right people who are righteous they um always trying to go towards reconciliation trying to make sure um you know to touch the hearts of people rather than just trying to you know devise some sort of smarts tricks um their uh, sincerity is more than what they say, right? That means they don't they don't use their mouth for just, just for the sake of it. They use it to convey something meaningful, powerful, or at least something useful, something helpful towards others. When they say something, we better listen because it has something very important in it. Words might not be a lot, but every word worth Every word waits a goal. You know, that's how a righteous person is. Uh, of course, they are not self-righteous. Self-righteous is this one. 
right? They're trying to appear as that kind of person by, you know, doing all sorts of show performance. It, but when people who can observe, we observe the entirety of the action, they will understand this person is not doing it out of their heart. They actually do it for a show. So the other hand, the opposite of righteous is vice, you know, wickedness. So people who do that, how do we define it? People who, you know, slander others, who express their anger openly, easily, you know, provoke more people to be more angry, less calm, less peaceful, you know. They express it in a way, you know, um, they say, hey, man, I'm not happy about this. This is not right and stuff. So what? Um, and then they say, I'm correct. I'm standing on the moral high ground. You know, I'm in the right place, you know. Um, and things they say might be true. You know, they might have a very solid, valid point. But why do they use it for? You know, what ends do they try to achieve with that? It's very different, you know. What we can differentiate is if it's pure, out of a pure mind, pure heart, out of a pure intention to actually uh, help people, to actually benefit the group, you know, trying to point out the issues so that everyone can avoid it, get better, instead of someone who used that as a, you know, casus belli, cause of war, you know, as a way to wage a certain um, negative perception, paint a certain smear on a person in order to maybe his opponents maybe someone he doesn't like depends on what kind of affliction that person has so that's a very subtle thing they might, they might appear and say that very logical words very sensible words but where do they use it at it's very important that takes experience to point out of course reading the books reading history helps and right? reading history on both sides helps Right, not just the just the official one. You also read the unofficial one. Of course, official one always trying to a bit more shy away from talking about the current government in charge. You know, that was a different time, right? Back in the imperial times. Because the boss is still in power. <laughs> you do, you don't talk that much. Even nowadays you talk about your own corporate boss you don't you're unable to do that that's why we have third party evaluation someone literally have no relationship with your organization come in as a fresh eye a pair of eye no affliction and trying to give you a very fair fairer assessment so that's how human works right um Another way we can see is when someone has mistakes, we exaggerate it, adding two tons. When they only did one ton, you add five tons on top and say that this person has done not just this mistake we already found out, he already admit, he also implies him as someone else you know, of that nature. You, you, you deviate that, uh, uh, that forum into that direction. It causes more people to... Um, you know, lose faith in them and then push them down to the deeper abyss. Um, and, you know, how do we avoid this, right? How do we, how do we see through this? Like, the first one is more on a public forum. The second one talks, it talks about the same thing. Commit blasphemy in claim doing so is just like in Buddhism, right? And they say, oh yeah, this is what, you can see a lot of cult and sect coming out just because they claim that one part, you know, Guan Yin or something, give, tell me about this, or uh, uh, someone, some famous um, teachers tell me about this. When their actual meaning is not there, they read something that is not there, they exaggerate it, make something out of it, market it perfectly to the needs of that current time, Especially back in the 80s, Qigong, you know, a very common health practice is meant to improve your health, medical, very health conscious time, right? That's a very harmless thing. It was used 
as a medium to spread some sort of misinterpretation of a religion or many religions. I don't want to name names. It's very obvious. And it creates a, 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 a whole series of that kind of thing, you know, that kind of following, even until today. This is common. It's very common. Right? Buddha already predicted the uh, Dharma ending age. There will be a lot of people who claim they are teachers. Teachers of the path, show you the path, promise you this, promise you that, you will get this. But when you compare their words against Sutra, it's unsubstantiated. All right. Some people might say, hey, I compare yours against the Sutra. It's not substantiated. See, this is, some, this is something we cannot fight. We can only use time, like Master Shin Kong used 60 years of his life, of his time as a Dharma practitioner to prove how real he is how sincere he is. He never once say that I'm, I'm right, you're wrong. He shy away from this. When people say, hey, what about this group? What about that group? He's like, I'm just going to hand it to the Dharma protector. You know, they, they are doing their jobs. You know, we only need to worry about how to deal with our greed, hatred, ignorance, how to actually better our faith in Amitabha's teaching according to the five sutras on Pure Land, right? In Final Life Sutra, Amitabha, Amitabha Sutra, um, the uh, observation of uh, In Final Life Sutra, Guan Wu Liang Su Jing. Oh, that's the Zi Bhutsa Nian Fu Yun Tong Zhang. Thus come worthy, uh, no. Thus arrive, you know, Bodhisattva of Great Force. Um, uh, his, um, how he attained enlightenment through chanting Amitabha. Alright, there's a section of it in the main sutra which is Fawa Dhamma Sutra I think Hua Yan Jing has a Fa Hua Jing I forgot one of the main sutra Fa Hua Jing talk, talk about 25 Bodhisattvas which each of them how do they attain the same point which is the enlightenment like a circle how do they go to the center each of them has just imagine there are 25 dots on the surface of the circle and there is a there's a center like a bull's eye in the center of the circle. Each of them, each of these dot, 25 dots is 25 bodhisattvas. More than that, it means 25, I mean, in summary, there are thousands of ways, but they've summarized in 25 ways to get into the enlightenment. And bodhisattva of great force, that's the bodhisattva. Uh, there was bodhisattva of great force arrived. Uh, it's a very awkward way to translate it. I'm so sorry. Um, he's one of the three main you know, patron saints of Pure Land. You know, Amitabha, Buddha, Avaloe, Kitesvara, or um, observing the world. I don't want to misunderstand. I'll just use the Sanskrit. Sorry, guys. Avaloe, Kitesvara, and, uh, and Dasa Zipusa. One day, one day, I'll memorize that. Okay, so point the point is he has attained enlightenment by thinking about Amitabha, remembering about Amitabha. Like when he's doing other stuff, he remembers the way we should treat other people, which is sincere, which is incompatible with how enlightened beings like Buddha treat other people. Sincere, no vice, no wickedness. And when he's alone, he chanamitofo. When he's not nothing to do, he chanamitofo. So that's how he attained enlightenment, All right? And Guan Yin Pusa, very famous, you know, Avalokitesvara. The whole name already tell you how he attained enlightenment. He observed the voice, but he not. She's not observing outside voice. He's observing the voice inside. When he hear the voice, he ref, he have an internal loop going on, and and he. F well, it's a very deep thing, uh, it, but not not like you don't understand. But it's just he the way he practices. The, he f start from external into internal, right? You hear, hear me saying, and then who is hearing? Who is the hearer? Who hears the voice? Who is uh, listening to the sound, right? Oh, so you said your mind, and what about the mind? And it goes deeper and deeper and deeper, right? Um, and the more he cultivate this, the more insightful he has on the um, on how this happens. You know, it sounds like a science thing. Yeah, the mind. Okay, what about the mind? You know, 
oh, you know, the neurons and stuff like that, you know, they will process the sound. Yeah, who's processing the sound? What makes the sound like this? I don't think he thinks, but he just allowed, yeah, he, he, he applied the layering, I think, into it. And then he went into the depths and say, oh, this is the true nature. He observed the true nature, right? He, he start from a normal sound we all can hear. Everyone hears sound. To a musician, they hear something's going on, something to be put into composition, making into a beautiful um, melody, like a like a tailor using threads, trying to um, you know trying to knead them into a beautiful piece of clothing. So does a musician, right? For normal people, it's just a sound, or oh, it's a beautiful sound, it's an ugly sound. But some people would attune, they will say, this sounds has coarseness into it. This sounds has sadness into it. This sounds has happiness into it. But we interpret this as we want. But Bodhisattva, of our Loikilesvara, or Bodhisattva who observe the sounds, the sounds of the world, he don't just observe it as a beautiful sound and stuff. Who says it's a beautiful sound? Why do I think it's a beautiful sound? Why it's like a rabbit hole, but it's not. Why do I? He's not. He he look at that observation. He observed the observer. He observed the 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 person who listened. So he go deeper and say, okay, beautiful sound, ugly sound. Why am I differentiating beautiful sound and ugly sound? And then when you go deeper and then understand, oh, this is the attachment to the sound. What about letting it go? Oh. If you to go to too further, you can't describe it, right? It, it, yeah, that's why you need to practice, right? So, twenty-five ways of getting to the enlightenment, right? So, both of them are very compatible with pure land. I know I'm detracting from <laughs> commit blasphemy and claim to be so just Why? Uh, why am I saying that? Right? I'll get back to that. I'll go back to that point. Uh, back to pure land. This um, we have. Guan Yin, we have Tasa Zi, right? We have these two Bodhisattvas next to Buddha, Amitabha, because to show us, you know, the methods to get into the pure land. And he emphasized these two. One is to be able to, to listen to your own voice when you're chanting, Guan Yin. And the other one is Tasa Zi, which is a great force, Bodhisattva of great force uh, that has arrived, um, is to always remember Always remember there is pure land. Always remember the seven uh, jewels, jewelries, you know, seven jewel, jewel ponds, right? And um, eight meritorious water uh, ponds. Uh, the structure, the architecture of the pure land, the land of the pure land, it's laden with gold. What's the whole point of all this? Is to enforce us remind we need to go there it, it, it draws the picture in final life sutra literally draws you a picture of how pure land is hence you can see the picture drawn by a lot of you know masters uh, talented artists on what pure land is based on what was described it helps us to remember and he says that you remember pure land is like a mother remember his child yeah, Buddha remember us like a mom remembers his son or daughter never forgets, always in their mind. But the son and daughter, which is us, the sentient beings, rarely go back and look at the mom. Always want to go around, play around, enjoy the world and explore. But forgetting that at the end of the day, we need to go home. So hence we are lost outside. And the mom keeps chasing the son, the son keeps running away. So that's literally the situation happening right now. Right? trying to tell you to go home you're like no nah, I don't want I want to play and then you felt down you know you felt lightly you felt seriously you do something bad got consequences mom is still there still waiting for you to come out of jail right it's the three lower rims or you went to a nice place you have a great life but mom's still waiting for you to come home drink his soup her soup but this is the compassion of Buddha he treat a whole century beings like his own baby, not just any baby, his own, only one baby, his, his only child. 
So that's the compassion. So understand this, this level of dharma. How can you commit blasphemy? That's why, why people have blasphemy. Why do they do that? Because they don't understand the actual hearts of the teaching. It's out of compassion and love and wisdom. Not trying to control you. Not trying to suffocate you. If they're trying to control you, they're trying to dictate you, they're trying to, you know, dictate your every move, it becomes easier to be, you know, manipulated, to commit blasphemy. So people who listen to the Dharma, we need to listen to the hearts of the Buddha. What do they truly want to say? All these things is just technical stuff, they're helping you to get there. But the hearts is always the most touching and the truest, the rawest form, always connecting to everyone. Just how you get, uh, get about it, you need to use proper thinking. And hence Buddha tells you about A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So among Buddha, they didn't say about, I love you or anything. He's, but when he say that, you felt his compassion. Even though he long passed, you know, his body that he appeared before us already passed for 2,500 years or some say 3,000 years. But his teaching, when you hear it, sometimes some people cry. I went to Tainan and Chan 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 uh, joined the Trajini ceremony. It's just a very peaceful and beautiful, serene moment where everyone chant Amitofo and with the rhythm, you know, by Master Wu Xing. And then one of the um, one of the Lama brother, he suddenly cried in the middle of the chanting. He was touched. He said, "Aha!" And he just cried. Right. Sometimes I myself too, like, felt touched. And there's nothing in there say I love you, I want to, you know, something like that. Nothing, nothing like that. It's a very peaceful and joyful stuff, right? So that's how, how we understand the teachings of the, you know, either the Buddha or even like Jesus, like Muhammad. Those are out of love, you know. Otherwise, they would have an enjoyable life. They don't have to deal with all these dramas. Uh, it's done out of love. Uh, compassions and if you use that mindset on all sorts of teachings no teaching will be used as a weapon no teaching will be used as a cult which is twisted form of teaching right it will always go back to the right place where the founder intended and and of course you need to cultivate the wisdom to see the changes of the world but in the end of the day it's all coming out of that compassionate heart the heart to want to help other people to relieve the sufferings, right? So this offense is done because people don't get it. They think they have all the smarts. They think you know they want you know I'm 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 bigger. You know I I will appear as a as a chosen one. You know if I can smear on the well-respected sages. You know, Confucius, Buddha, Jesus, Muhammad. I can play or around with their names, appear to as a freedom person or a person unbound. But they are like you, like human as well. They're not like trying to suddenly come from media and then appear to you like one of those games. They're normal people. They grow up, right? Despite what people claim, right? They appear as normal people. In the very least, we can say that. I'm trying to tell you that live your life properly honestly all right to commit blasphemy on that is just saying you're disrespecting yourself you could be that person you know that means you could do better they're showing you how a human could do the what what is a really good person what's a righteous person do a example of a righteous person because this world has more vice than good too much wicked than more more wicked than good people. San Sao you know, sages are very, very precious, more precious than gold. Right? You can't see them. But like, sages to appear themselves in public is so rare. And the fakes are a plenty out there. Claim as some sort of guru and this and that. You know, in the end of the day, got your money, got your time, or even got your body. Right? So it's so rare. So the their appearance is to tell you how a person, a pinnacle of a human, is. If 
if we if we understand and we want to follow he's just giving you a choice there's an example that fits you you follow it and they are proof the action that deeds and the the teachings have proven to produce a lot of good people right that means no matter how much you know rotten apples is there that means that it it works you know it's bound to have rotten apples you know um, and to be honest it happens because of habits karmic habits even though you have Buddha in front of you you might not recognize him because you have karmic obstacles right? if you know obstacles you can see Buddha is everywhere or sages are everywhere they're just not showing themselves there's no need right if they can't listen to the teaching and actually be better person what's the point of them showing themselves right and this might happen instead commit blasphemy they might say you are the one who is blasphemy can you imagine Jesus coming down and, and say I'm hiding among the crowds and then uh, one of those people trying to claim that he's a Jesus coming and say hey uh, you are the one who is wrong and he's like you know, I didn't say that I'm just saying you know me shall inherit uh, the earth you know than those wicked ones people who are Lao Zi Ting Hua Zeng Gan shall inherit the earth people who are meek in the in sense they are honest they follow the rules they understand um, the importance of public good people who really cares about the public good everyone they are the one who will be blessed with merits like inherit the earth which is taking care of the earth so those are sages all right in our terms bodhisattvas right if we understand that point of view no one can blast for, no one can cloud your judgment you're steady it's like it's like a mom looking at the kids trying to play all the tricks but she already know where he's going but still lovingly not hatred why would you argue with a kid right it it sounds funny now right when you mm, what unless you want to play with the kid yeah like just as a playmate it's like hey hey like um you know make fun of it it's fine but you know you are moved because you reach the level so this one as well unstable unsecure that's what they're trying to smear on other people to add more uh, glow on them and and that's miserable as well people who have to resort to this level is miserable little did they know all sentient beings have the same virtue merits uh, capability uh, of why wisdom smarts of a buddha of a fully enlightened person because of wandering thoughts they could not do it because of that wandering thoughts which is the second thought which is the thought like this they distract themselves from working on themselves and improve and improve their lives i'm not talking about just inner cultivation like Leo say someone asked if you talk uh, he asked yeah moral cultivation right he asked about zen master yungu right if you remember hey um venerable uh master yungu if you said this cultivation right those are for inner inner cultivation spiritual it has nothing to do with because he's looking for you know improving his life you know like, like literally like in, in in a physical sense like more wealth more power you know how what's the right way to do it but right? he wants to go and get more um he wants to get promotion basically in his career i want to get promoted but a uh, master how do i do that um and um of course master say you need to start changing your ways in doing and he's like yes these are all spiritual cultivation they say who said that right like Conf uh, confucius and Mencius did say that but they didn't say it's only for inner cultivation nothing to do with the outside if you do it right inside you settle your insight your heart and everything you figure it out inside nothing out nothing can stop you from achieving success on the outside you clear on what you want you 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 clear on your weakness your strength you're able to handle it you're able to change your life slowly you're putting an effort you may not there but you that you're putting an effort to the, to get there isn't that a path to success then he's like oh yeah 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 so yeah more, the, what I'm trying to you know you know share with everyone at the end of this is no matter what you do right 
all these are like kids jumping around throwing tantrum it's not um it's not helping anything the gains they have is superficial the admiration is based on false information which is lies and it will fall like a sand castle when the waves come uh, the way they do it is because they're insecure they envy they um trying to be loved be respected but using the wrong way everyone yearns to be loved and respected but it's a wrong way to do that because they are wrong they do it wrong because they don't understand there's a better way they don't understand there's a better way because they didn't have access to this even if they are looking at the sutra they don't have that insight into it that's why a good teacher a good speaker is very important and patient teacher patient speaker is even more important because you can be very good at analyzing this right you can say all is well but when you put it in the real situation and you throw tantrum say hey you shouldn't do that at the first sign of troubles first sign of humiliation first sign of um, defamation then you're lost you lost the battle not against them but against your own demons and hence you can't touch their hearts they're already clouded with all these wandering thoughts all this you know rubbish they have filled themselves in without knowing you who know better should not like a mom who should not throw tantrum with his children as well rather she should wisely understand what the children's temperament is and find the right time to touch the heart of the kids by telling, try, trying to convey the message what is right and wrong. So if he wants a tantrum, you know, like on candy and you don't have candy, like Buddha, right? He gives, pluck a leaf, fold it into a nice candy wrapping and he's talk to the kids, say, this is the candy. Oh no, this is the coins. You use it to get the candy. But I will give him the candy eventually, but for now, just satiate this kid's behavior so that he's settled down enough to listen to the Dharma, which is the real candy. Right? Same goes for myself, you know, yourself, ourselves. We need to settle down our inner kids, that part where it's too, um, too eager, too much. It's throwing tantrum, it's uh, craving too much desire, too much excessiveness, too much, too extreme. Those, you know, ex extremities tame it down by, you know, temporarily satiate it, but understand eventually you need to feed the real nutrition to it. You, know, you need to actually help it to build capability. All right. So, so you have to figure out yourself. That's why Liao Fan have to fix his conduct. He has to slowly fix his conduct before he get the, get to see the result. Uh, that's how it works yeah so reflect always reflect um, you know get yourself access to the Dharma but remember Dharma is just a condition if your course is not right no matter how much Dharma you listen how much Amitabha you chant you wouldn't get that result of clarity serenity you know um, the, the sincerity, purity, um, equality, uh, and the wisdom, you know, right awakening, and that compassion. You can't get that result this out by Master Ching Kong because you are not in the right place. Your heart is not in the right place. And how do you get to the to the right place? It's up to you. It's up to you, right? It's not like a fixed stuff. Right. What you need to fix is pick on path like us, pick on pure land, go to pure land. But those are big, big, big projects. You need to break it down into something day to day. Like, how do I deal with this part of myself who is lazy? So I need to find something to force myself to work. Uh, how do you deal with that part of myself, which is too easy to throw temper? So now I need to find a way to deal with it. Uh, maybe you know, step out of it. Maybe find someone to talk to before you know I cooped it up too much. Find someone I trust to talk to. Find someone I can 
discuss. If I find discussion is useless, sit down and listen to the meditation, have a walk, you know, learn like what Bodhisattva Guan Yin have done, the Avalokitesvara, who listen to the voice, listen to the anger. Why is it anger? Who is angry? Who is me? Why am I angry? Oh, I'm angry about this. Okay. So who am I? Why am I angry? Why am I angry? And then you eventually find out, oh, yeah, what's the point? Get there. We get there. We just need to repetitively get to there. To a point where we can eventually don't need to move, but we can pull back ourselves without worries. And that's when you know no one can sway you away because you already set on the right path. Right? And when people set on the right path, they don't say I'm on the right path. He just show how the right path is by living a life. You know, in their life, their action, their deeds is naturally in accordance to the five precepts. There's no need to say I follow this. It's very natural. Um, before that, we need to force ourselves a bit, but a little bit, a little bit. You know, push ourselves back, and then you find yourself in the sweet spot, and then you understand you might you can't maintain that sweet spot for more than five hours, and then you get back to that normal state again, and then you come back and you find yourself holy moly, I have to take three months to come back, I take half a year to come back, yeah, to come back to that level where you are no longer attached, worry, jumping, you're happy as is, you're content, you're able to chant Amitofo, and you chant Amitofo, every word Amitofo very clearly, it's an indication you're back, and then you find yourself, oh yeah, you're told, oh, I'm back again, so, Dharma is important, chanting is important, those are tools, always, Oh, always remember the path like the other one Bodhisattva great force that, that arrived Tassizipusa always remember it, there is a home behind you there is a home no matter how far you ran you have to go back home I have to go home if you forget what the home feels like feel about how compassionate it means people who treat you well people who really loves you you know who, people who give everything they have to you. That's what home feels like. And that's what pure land feels like. Right? Mm. We'll get there. All right. Okay. 10.45, 10.46. Quite a bit. One more day, one more week, we can finish this chapter. This is a very good chapter. I like it. Touches me as well. Any uh, Anything else to share before? Uh, we finish or uh, we'll conclude here and we'll share it later Tai San we say teach on, on stage is student on below stage is teacher that's how it works I, I really really recognize that thank you for your patience thank you may the merits and virtues adorn the Buddha's pure land repay the four kinds of kindness above and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion and leave the teachings for the rest of this life. Then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. A-mi-to-fo 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 for a me to for a me to for a me to for a me to for